Let's look at bear. Now, the noun is easy. It's just one of these. Literally, it can mean to support weight, but figuratively, we use it to mean to put up with or to tolerate. I can't bear this cold weather. It's too much for me. I can't bear this job. It's too hard. I can't bear to wait any longer. I'm going home. Another literal meaning is to carry something, but we more often use it in the expression to bear in mind, which means to think about or remember. Bear in mind these prices will go up. What you need to bear in mind is that practice will help you. Bear in mind this isn't finished yet. So the verb bear literally means to support, hold or carry. But bear in mind we often use it in idioms. It's tough, but you'll just have to grin and bear it. Hello, I'm Sam from BBC Learning English and in this episode we're going to look at the differences between see, watch and look. All three are verbs and all three involve using your eyes. See can have many non-literal meanings, but its basic meaning is to have the ability to use your eyes. I can't see anything. Or it can mean to notice something with your eyes. Did you see the full moon last night? It was huge. To look means to turn your eyes towards something so that you can see it. They said that if I look carefully at the painting, I can see a flower. Hmm. And watch is to look at something for a period of time really looking carefully. Right now, you are watching this video and paying very close attention, I'm sure. Hi everybody, I'm Tom from BBC Learning English. People often confuse the words specially and especially. Today, I'm going to tell you the difference. Both of these words are adverbs. Especially means in particular or most of all. For example, I like food, but I especially like sandwiches. This means that I particularly like sandwiches. They're my favourite kind of food. Specially, however, has a different meaning. Specially means for a particular purpose or in a particular way. So, this sandwich was specially made. Dan made a special sandwich just for me. Thank you, Dan. Hi everyone, welcome back to English in a Minute. Today we're going to look at five verbs that are followed by an ing noun. Not all verbs are followed by an ing, but these five are. So, let's get started. The couple avoided doing the housework. Avoid means to stay away from or stop yourself from doing something. Sean denied taking the pen. Deny means to say that you didn't do something. I really enjoy cooking. Many verbs that are about likes and dislikes are followed by an ing. I recommend watching the new horror film. Recommend is a verb that we use to give advice. I regret not going to university. Regret is a verb that means that you wish something in the past had been different. If you enjoyed watching this video, I recommend subscribing to the BBC Learning English channel. I promise you won't regret subscribing. Hi, I'm Tim from BBC Learning English, here to tell you about two words we use to say that things are similar. We use like as a preposition before a noun or pronoun, and it means similar to. He ran like the wind, not he ran as the wind. We use like and not as to compare appearances. This house looks like a castle. As can be used as a preposition. It means in the role of. My best friend's name is Tim. He's very Tim. Dan, as your friend, I have to say, you're not a good singer. We often use as to talk about people's jobs. I work as an actor. Be careful using like and as because the meaning can change. As your brother, I'll try to help you means I actually am your brother. Change it to like and it means I'm not your brother, but I want to act in a similar way. I'm Georgina from BBC Learning English. Do you ever wonder about the difference between whisper, murmur and mumble? 
They are all used to describe different ways of speaking quietly. Whisper means to speak quietly, often on purpose, so that only someone very close can hear what you're saying. I don't want everyone to hear. I'll have to whisper. I've got a secret to tell you. I'll have to whisper it though. Murmur means to speak quietly, often in a low continuous voice, so it's hard to understand. I love you, she murmured in her sleep. Do you uh, want to go for a coffee? I can't hear what you're saying. Stop murmuring. Mumble means to speak quietly, often in a low voice, making it difficult to understand. She's always mumbling and complaining very quietly, so I can't hear. It drives me mad. I'm really sorry I shouldn't have eaten the last biscuit. That was a really mumbled apology. I could hardly hear it. Bye. Hi, I'm Sean from BBC Learning English. Today, I'm going to give you five uses of the verb get. So you get five lessons for the price of one. Number one, get can mean buy or obtain. I got myself a new phone last weekend. Number two, get can mean receive. They just got a message. Number three, get with an adjective can mean become. Oh, so many messages. I'm getting really annoyed. Number four, get can also mean understand. Hang on, someone's just sent me a joke. I don't get it. Intense. I get it. Number five, get can also mean arrive. I need to get home early, so I'm off. Hi, I'm Roy, and today I'm going to tell you the difference between two words that are often confused. Hear and listen. Here is the verb we use to talk about the ability. It doesn't mean that we want to hear something. It's about sounds coming to our ears. I can hear the air conditioning. It doesn't mean that I want to hear it, but I can. The verb listen is often followed by the preposition to. We use this verb when we're paying attention or focusing on sounds. I hope you're listening to me. <laughs> that means I hope you're paying attention. Compare these two sentences. I can hear some music somewhere. I am listening to some music. I'm listening to a song that I want to listen to. Anyway, I've got to go. I can hear my boss calling me. Hi guys, this is Keith from BBC Learning English. And today, I'm going to tell you the differences between until and by. We use until to talk about doing something up to a certain point in time. If I say I have to take care of my dog until 5 p.m., it means I will start taking care of my dog now and stop taking care of it at 5 p.m. On the other hand, we use by to talk about doing something before a future time or a deadline. If I say I have to finish an essay by 5 p.m., it means I can start anytime, but I will make sure that at 5 p.m. I have finished writing the essay. So I may even finish it at 3 p.m or any time before five. So we use until to describe doing something up to a certain point in time, and we use by to describe doing something before a future time or a deadline. Hi, I'm Phil from BBC Learning English. Today, I'm gonna to tell you how we use play, do, and go with different sports. So for team sports or ball games, we use play. So I can say, I play football, I don't play tennis. For more individual activities, we use do. So we can say, I do exercise, I don't do judo. Then for activities ending in ing, we often use go. So I can say, I go running, or I don't go swimming. Of course, there are some exceptions, but try to remember, play for team sports or ball games, do for individual activities and go for activities ending in ing.